Hello there, I am BeautyBot, and the last time you heard from me, I was doing this. Breathe and tell me and make me real. Um, now I mostly do this. I cover Apex Legends for GameSpot and a couple other websites, and it has kind of, you know, taken over my life in the best of ways. Um, now, I uh, was a, a bit surprised uh, by the news that Apex Mobile will be shutting down, and it's now about 60 days on May 1st. That is just, like, uh, it launched on May 17th of 2022 so this is it didn't even last a year um kind of surprising especially given the fact that like i mean like just off the top of my head um it was the most downloaded mobile game in 60 countries and the week after it launched it made uh five million uh dollars in the first week after it launched it won the iphone game of the year award it won user's choice and another uh game at the google plays like best of awards it basically won everything you can win except for best mobile game at the game awards and i i do kind of like wonder if <laughs> if they'd won if they would have maybe not canceled or or like or decided to sunset it or if they would have um perhaps given it a little more time to kind of even if they plan to go forward with the cancellation and sunset um to kind of distance that that like the the time frame between winning just every freaking award you can possibly win to actually we're just you know this game's over so i want to say from the start i was not a fan of apex mobile as a concept when i heard that it was coming out i was like that's cool um i didn't really expect it to really be anything other than a, a mobile you know version of apex legends and I, um, coincidentally had kind of just started writing at GameSpot, like, I don't know, like a, a month, uh, before it was, it launched. Um, so I kind of became like the de facto, uh, Apex Mobile person. And, uh, because of that, obviously ended up playing it. Now, mind you, prior to this, I was all console all the way, clearly, um, and hadn't really messed with mobile games much other than like you know goofy little fashion games or candy crush angry birds back in the day i think the most recent thing i'd played was PUBG mobile which was you know fun but just not my preferred method of consuming you know gaming content but as i played apex mobile i started to really fall in love with the gameplay um i got pretty decently good at it. I never used a controller. Um, I have really bad tendonitis and like carpal tunnel probably needs a surgery for it at this point. So, uh, you know, people would be like, oh, you need to hook up a controller, but I'm dropping like 22 kills in TDM just using my little, you know, carpal tunnel thumbs. So I, I was doing pretty good at it, really enjoying it and really surprised at how much I enjoyed the actual gameplay aspect. But as far as the lore goes, from day one, the minute that it was clear that we were getting mobile first legends that then kind of were maybe going to come to console and PC, but maybe not. And it, it kind of, Respawn kind of went back and forth on that. Like they'd call them mobile first legends in, in one, you know, press release or something and then call them mobile exclusive legends in a, another you know, interview with a developer or something. Um, and so it was kind of unclear. They would make statements like, we have no current plans to bring them, but it seemed like prior to launch that they had had plans. So I didn't really have a problem with it until it became clear that Apex Mobile was canon and going to have exclusive characters uh, and thus exclusive lore. Um, and I, I get it. Like, Apex is a very lore-heavy game. That's what got me s super into it. When I, you know, first started, I was absolutely terrible at it on console. I still am, but I really enjoy it and, you know, can actually wipe a few squads here and there. So, uh, you know, it, it's definitely an enjoyable experience. But I, I was kind of concerned about the state of the story before Apex Mobile even 
entered the picture. Uh, I think that what they've done this season and, you know, slowing down the Legend releases, focusing on picking up plot threads that they haven't touched since season six, like that kind of thing we need more of. But at the time that Apex and Mobile launched, we had no idea that was going to happen. As far as we knew, it was we're just going to keep having this legend assembly line. We're going to keep adding more people in. Hopefully, you know, I was hoping we'd get more characters like Jackson um, that already, you kind of already knew. So, you know, maybe have Crypto Sister Mila join the games because it was getting to the point where it was like, this is a really cool character. Like I, like Catalyst, for example, is a really, really cool character. And I, sorry, my screen fell asleep. And I was uh, very kind of disappointed at how much I didn't care because only because I did not have the room to care. It was like Octane and Lifeline are fighting, like, you know, all this other stuff. There's, you know, there's a lot going on. Uh, Watson's hiding that she knows Crypto's sister and all that stuff. Like it just, there's so much going on. There's the Loba, Valkyrie, you know, uh, Bangalore situation. I just don't have enough room to care about another new character with another new backstory and another new group of their own like orbital NPC characters like Margo and stuff like that where it was just like this is a really cool story but damn like it, this is just a lot so finding out that they were going to add more to that story kind of concerned me um and I want to move on to kind of an issue that I think plagued it from the beginning, which is the premise of Apex Mobile. Now, Respawn said pretty early on that Apex Mobile is in fact canon, which does not make sense for so many reasons, um, but <laughs> I it, it was like this revelation that, oh, by the way, um, the legends that you see aren't the only legends. Uh, you know, they're not the only Apex competitors. It, it you know, goes all over the place, which, kind of makes sense because it's like okay they've got all these arenas what happens you know on the off season when we're not using king's canyon like what's going on there are there other games going on there but like i also feel like it still would make sense for them to be like yeah we'll just come back to this arena like next season so this like concept of this is the same games it's not an alternate universe it's not an alternate timeline but also, uh, for instance, King's Canyon is like Skulltown is still intact. It's obviously now been changed around a little bit, but it, the the maps that are a major part, like play a major part in the game's lore, are in a different state in the mobile game. And on top of that, we're introducing characters in a different order than they've been introduced to the console and PC version of the game, which they did do a pretty good job of, like not really goofing that up, but just for instance, like, why would Loba be there before Revenant? Um, I, like, it, it, the whole point was that she found him and then was like, oh, let me come get revenge for my family. So it was like, it, it was just very odd. Um, and it felt to me like sort of last minute retconning, like, well, we need something to get people to play this mobile game. That something is gonna have to be new legends and new legends means new lore and you know yada 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 um so let's say that oh actually this has been a, a big competition you know this whole time but i would argue that the way things have been set up that can't really be the case because first of all just first of all you expect me to believe that elliot witt mirage the like chatterbox you know of the of the ship aside from like octane is playing these games with fade and rhapsody and not like we're not hearing him talk about it on console and pc like i just i don't buy it and i think it would have been a little bit better if they had tied that into the um the main you know console and pc version of the game like have him make a couple of comments about Fade or Rhapsody and, and what they're doing. Like, that's my other question is what are Fade and Rhapsody doing during, uh, you know, the, the mobile matches? Now, obviously, you could argue the same thing with the, uh, the standard, like, console and PC legends not all being already, like, joined up in Apex Mobile, but it still is just, like, a really confusing sort of thing to me that 
suddenly this game that we know is super exclusive, like uh, Newcastle before he got, you know, skin walked by Jackson, like was, you know, trying so hard to get in and failing and sucking. And like, it seems like this is a pretty exclusive thing. Valkyrie had to basically, you know, almost shoot Blisk in the get her invite. Um, it, it you know, crypto lied his way in. It seems like it's not something that's easy to come by. It's not something that's easy to do if you are not truly a legend. So I find it hard to believe that it's actually closer to like, you know, Major League Baseball or something. And actually everyone who plays is a legend and there's like hundreds of them or dozens and dozens that you just have never seen or even heard of. I don't buy it. Unless you make it something like, oh, well, they're part of this special team that, you know, I don't, let's separate from the, the legends that we have on console and PC. But again, then why are they intermixing in the mobile game and not bringing any of that lore to the main game? So that kind of brings me to my next issue, which, uh, uh, I, shortly after launch, uh, Frozen Fro, uh, whose his name is David, but he uh, was perhaps best known as Frozen Fro. Uh, he was a pretty prolific data miner and eventually got hired by Respawn as their official lore historian for Apex Legends. And so he was uh, doing a lot of the explaining um, as far as the uh, lore, you know, regarding the mobile game and the mobile legends. And he said, there's a, a tweet I, I remembered, and I had to, like, look it up to find it. But uh, he, there are people asking, like, you know, what, what's going on? And he, he eventually says, like, you know, what's going on in terms of lore and continuity? And he eventually says, Mobile will tell the story of Fade, another contestant within the Apex games, which is bigger than just our 21 Legends. But that will be self-contained. You don't need to follow it if you don't want to. Which brings me to just the first issue I had, which is, I want to. I love Apex's story. But you've already got this Spaghetti Junction 23 now, you know, character ginormous arc. And I, I love it, but it's like I can barely keep up with that. Now you want me to... Like, you're going to kind of dangle this little lore carrot in front of me. This super interesting, you know, character who's got a simulacrum suit. We didn't know that was a thing until now. That's, you know, incredibly relevant to characters like Ash and Revenant um, and even Loba. Like, it, it's it's the kind of thing where it's like, lore-wise, they would fit right into the main game. Um, and I I just kind of was like, I I want to follow that story. I just don't want to have to play two games. And it was like, even his introductory, like, uh, like obviously he had a bio, but there was like an introductory chapter, like story thing for Fade that like you had to play to access uh, as opposed to on, you know, regular Apex, the ch chapters just unlock now, um, at, you know, throughout the season. So it was like, if you missed that or you didn't manage to finish it, you were kind of left like, what? You know, uh, it, it, it just kind of didn't make sense if they really were going to stick to this. Well, we don't really have any plans to bring them to the, the you know, the main game. Um, I, I, I think that that was kind of an unwise decision. I think a better premise for the game may be something closer to, like, we know that there are qualifier matches to get into the Apex games. I think setting up a mobile game around that concept and having it be like, okay, so, you know, they'll have, maybe that's part of being a legend as you go and compete in the qualifying matches so that whoever's trying to qualify is fighting against real legends uh, to, to see if they can make the cut, right? So that would explain, A, why not all of our legends are there yet, B, why they're there at all, um, and C, also kind of provide a level of separation from the main game that makes a little bit more sense uh, in terms of, of mobile exclusive characters being there and not in this game. Um, and so I think it would be a really interesting concept to have had it be like, okay, you know, yeah, we're, we're introducing, you know, Legends from the, the console and PC version every few months, but we're also introducing our mobile you know, first legends or whatever. 
And then eventually, you know, every couple seasons, we get a stories from the Outlands for regular Apex uh, that shows, you know, Fade winning his qualifying match and getting into the games. Like, can you imagine the hype of like, oh my God, they're like actually coming to console and PC? Like, yeah, like I, I, I can't imagine that being like bad for business in terms of just the the hype and the you know a huge part of the community is there uh like for for lore and like almost lore over gameplay in some instances um and so i i think that that would be a way better like premise but i i think regardless of what happens with apex mobile fade and rhapsody need to come to the main game now Rhapsody is a little bit of like a she's not my favorite. I love her like she's like I love her as a character, but I feel like in the ensemble she's kind of like got Valkyrie's like devil mayor care. I don't, you know, I'm just kind of a wild child, you know, on a mission attitude combined with lifelines like music is my personality thing. Not not that that's all lifeline is at all. I'm not trying to say that she's like one dimensional or anything it's not like that but uh it, so i i feel like veracity kind of doesn't stand out as much as she could in terms of just her whole shtick um but i do think that she could you know fit well into the the main universe of the game um fade absolutely i think needs to be in the game again there, we have a guy with a what's going on there and even with with Rhapsody's situation, um, Pythus, you know, the where she's from, and the uh, various, we learn in the mobile game that there are, like, three other groups that are, like, kind of controlling the syndicate and, like, all of that. That lore is very interesting. It's kind of hard to see how that could be self-contained lore that's also good if it's about people running the syndicate. Like, so I, I feel like no matter what you do, we need to bring these characters to the main game. For the simple fact that if they're really legends, they shouldn't be thrown away. They shouldn't be these throwaway characters. That might have been easier to get away with if it was like, oh, they're just competing to get into the real Apex games. But that was not the premise of the mobile game. The premise of the mobile game was this is the Apex games, just with different people that you don't you know, didn't know we're there, basically. And I think that it sort of cheapens the idea of what a legend is to kind of just be like, okay, they're gone. Mm. Um, additionally, imagine being a voice actor and finding out that you're going to be in, you know, an Apex game. Like, that's awesome. I'm going to be in Apex. And then you find out, like, okay, it's the mobile game, so, like, maybe the gig doesn't pay as well. Maybe it does. I don't know. Uh, you're definitely not as well-known, you know, maybe in terms of the regular Apex fan base as, as you know, the, the characters that are also on console and PC, but that's still, like, a reasonable assumption of, like, I'm gonna have a steady gig, you know, they'll need new voice lines and stuff, you know, somewhat for the into the future. So imagine kind of having that, sort of having to swallow the I'm the mobile legend, but I don't know, I might come to the main game pill. And then also just surprise, it's over. That, like, has to suck for the voice actors. But again, just the idea of what a legend is and how important their personalities and their just their existence, their the way they tie into the lore is... I think it's a, a bad move to just discard them. Now, I'm not saying that's what Respawn will do, but I am saying we have not really heard anything about, like, since the announcement of the, the you know, Sunset, uh, we haven't really heard anything about the fate of Fate and Rhapsody, and I think that they really do need to do right by these characters. Um, I, I fail to find a way that a guy in a simulacrum suit is not relevant to the main plot. That was sort of my main issue when they were like, you don't have to follow the story if you don't want to. It's like, how does this not play into to Ash and Revenant and, and you know, Crypto and like all of these other characters that would probably be interested in that kind of thing? Um, so I think that that's something that they should 
definitely consider. Um, in terms of actual gameplay, I've heard a lot of people be like, oh, you know, like Fade's ability to rewind time, like that would never fly in the main game. Like that just wouldn't work on console and PC. It just wouldn't. Um, I see what you're saying, but I also like would argue, look at our other legends. So many of them no longer re even resemble what their original abilities were that I'm going through article by article for GameSpot and rewriting the the legend guides because the the um you know the the stats and cooldown times and, and passives and all of that have changed now we have these legend classes I you know Watson was rebuilt from the ground up so many times I lost count I don't think it would be a stretch at all like the like uh, uh, to just kind of change their abilities around a little bit um to to make it them fit into you know console and pc gameplay so i i really don't and i don't think that that mobile fans who are fans of these characters and also play on pc or console and want to see them join the games like i don't think they would care i you know wouldn't give a, a if they were like oh well we obviously can't have him just rewinding time all crazy so let's do something else i wouldn't be like that's her you know like i, I would just be like okay that's reasonable um so and I think the Rhapsody could pretty easily be worked in. Like, I, I don't really feel like her abilities are like, whoa, so unique. Like, she kind of just has a shield and, you know, I, I don't think hers would be difficult to implement at all. So I I think that ultimately, uh, as much as the, you know, fans of the mobile game deserve better, I don't think there's much we can do in terms of, like, I've, I've seen the Save Apex Mobile hashtag trending and stuff on Twitter and I really you know at this point don't think that there's anything to be done but I do think that there are still moves Respawn can make to kind of uh, soften the blow do right by the fans of these characters pardon me I keep burping uh, do right by the uh, voice actors and all of the uh, just the writers like everyone who put all of their love and care and you know just general uh you know everything they had into this game and into making it good um i think that a lot of my issue with apex mobile initially was the fact that regular apex was having in my opinion the worst year that it's ever had you know months of xbox being basically unplayable a whole season of lobo being unplayable and that's when they introduce her to the mobile game kind of the concept of there being TDM in the mobile game and not in the game that has made you over two billion dollars in, you know, however many, it was three years at the time that it had made the two billion dollars for them, like the, you know, people had waited. And so obviously it's great that TDM is here now and all of that, but uh, I think that softened the bl softens the blow as well. But I think that had Apex been in a better place, I think people may have been a little more willing to play Apex Mobile that were, like, regular Apex fans, um, instead of it kind of just being more fans of mobile gaming, but, uh, you know, the, the there were a lot of, kind of, missteps in terms of everything that Apex Mobile kind of pe became from the beginning, uh, but I do think there's a chance to kind of save it, uh, but as, in terms of, like, coming to an end, but... I would also say that, like, you know, the, the they've said, EA has said, this, you know, may not be the last that we see of Apex in the you know, mobile space. And to that, I would say, you know, you haven't really done a great job of retaining, uh, like, player trust. I know people are going to say, well, if you spent money on a, a game, you're an idiot, and you should know that, you know, whatever, that it's going to be better, it, like, it's or it's going to be terrible, and, you know, it's better to buy something in real life, or, you know, whatever. But bottom line, like, if your game isn't even functional for a full year, like, I think the least you can do is make your last battle pass free. 
um, or something like that. Like the fact that I'm still getting push notifications to come buy Horizon with real life money and come like do all this other stuff in a game that's not going to exist in 60 days is kind of just like, okay, why would I be interested in your next mobile offering? Um, and assuming that that mobile offering is another version of sort of Apex Mobile as we know it, I would urge them to kind of rethink the premise and rethink the idea of mobile exclusive legends, um, because I, I think that it's it's just it just doesn't make sense. Um, and you know you can kind of say oh there have been these people all along that you never knew about, but it just I don't believe it. I don't believe that there are these other characters and we've never heard like Mirage and Octane gossip about them. I don't believe that, you know, having characters like Rhapsody who loves music and Lifeline who loves music, like just having no interaction or mention of these mobile characters outside of the game. And I don't think that the idea of bringing in more characters to a game that already kind of has too many and has too much lore is necessarily the best idea. Even if it's like, oh, this is self-contained. It's hard to be self-contained when you have things, again, like a, a Rhapsody's ties to the Syndicate or a, a character like Fade with a Simulacrum suit, where it's like, okay, you can say it's not tied in, but I want it to be. I want to see Revenant's reaction to that. I, I want to see, you know, Ash's reaction to that. I want to see Lifeline you know, at least mention that she's got a friend, you know, DJ Rhapsody or what, you know, whatever. Um, I, I would say if they do try to resurrect this, um, I would at least try to have some sort of incentive or reward for people that played the original game um, or have the first battle pass be free. Uh, something to kind of, I don't want to say like apologize, but to sort of make up for the way that this has ended, because you have other games that didn't even last a year, <coughs> Rumble Burst, um, that are giving refunds, and that was kind of like the first thing Apex said in their little, you know, FAQ that was just like, nope, no refunds, <laughs> no mercy, and uh, I don't think there's a lot of goodwill going around among the mobile fan base. Meanwhile, the the um, you know, console and PC, like, is, it's, it's been, like, night and day. Like, last season, we had a $170 Peacekeeper. This season, we finally have heirloom shards instead of a stupid prestige skin that I don't want. Um, and we've got, I mean, just, they've really gone hard on the rewards and fan appreciation. They've gotten better at communicating, all of that stuff. But I would say, I mean, just with the amount of money that regular Apex pulls in, I feel like if Splitgate can, you know, end feature development, even though they're still having, like, you know, competitive, like, championships and stuff, they're still adding new cosmetic items, they're still, you know, uh, doing, like, map contests, the, all of that. Despite the fact that, that they are ending feature development, they're still keeping the Splitgate servers online. Now, meanwhile, it, obviously that's not a mobile game, but I feel like like when I heard Splitgate was, was ending feature development, I was like, uh-oh, like here we go, and kind of ex expected a similar outcry of anger to what we saw with Apex Mobile. But uh, I, after, you know, participating in the Discord Town Hall and the um, AMAs on Reddit, I really was like, okay, th this is how you do it. This is how you end feature development on a game without pissing off every single fan on the planet. Um, Splitgate has a uh, Twitter account specifically for like server updates. Um, I think Apex would benefit a lot from that, um, and I think it would also get a lot of the toxicity off of their... Uh, main Facebook page if there was at least a dedicated Twitter that was like here's what's going on with the servers like I think that's been an issue in the past is like not only is there a game breaking bug there's a game breaking bug and you aren't talking about it you or you haven't acknowledged it or you've only acknowledged it in like a comment reply but you haven't actually tweeted like hey we're doing this they've gotten a lot better with that so I, I do have hope but when it comes to sunsetting Apex Mobile I think just a lot has been there's just a lot left to be desired and i think that um 
it almost feels like a kind of a distraction. Like, hey, look look over here. There's all this great stuff here and all this stuff from the mobile game that, that you've been begging for for, you know, months. We've got TDM, you know, all of that. Um, almost kind of as a distraction from the state of the mobile game, which it's working, I, you know, for me. But for players who maybe don't, like, enjoy Apex on console or PC or can't afford a console or a PC, like, this has to be a devastating blow. Like, imagine if you woke up tomorrow, if you're a console and PC player and you don't play the mobile game or don't really care about the mobile game, imagine waking up tomorrow and Apex is gone. Even if it was, you know, rewind to year one Apex, like, that would be heartbreaking. And it, especially with the way that just from the get-go, the mobile game obviously pushed just these you know, boatloads of, of cosmetics, like, it wasn't as if they were like, oh, let's kind of see how this goes. It seemed like they were like, this is here to stay. And then suddenly, you know, you wake up and then it's gone. I would be devastated if I woke up and it was just like, actually, you know, it, like, we're, do we're done, you know, Apex is over. And so I imagine that a lot of mobile players are feeling very upset about that and the fact that the mobile game again like that's the other thing splitgate did is there uh, i believe it's called the infinite battle pass is free um so there's still content for players to interact with they're still doing bug fixes and like i said competitions and stuff like that they're still doing things to engage the loyal community and the whole reason they're doing it is because they're already working on another game Meanwhile, Apex is like, no, you can't have your money back. Yes, we know we didn't even manage to keep this running for a full year. Um, and n sure, we've got some, maybe some plans to try this again some sort of, of way, uh, but no elaboration on what that would look like, no current plans, no, hey, if you've spent money in Apex Mobile, then you'll get whatever in this other game. And with the way that Respawn, or not, sorry, not Respawn, EA also uh, canceled uh, Battlefield Mobile and, and that kind of thing, it does look to me like they're more kind of pulling out of the, the mobile space, I guess. Um, so I wouldn't hold my breath for another, you know, full Apex Mobile. Frankly, I feel like if we see Apex in a mobile game again, it will be something completely different, some other kind of game very much not like a battle royale kind of shoot i mean I, I could see some sort of marvel snap situation i don't know you know um but I, I really don't see it coming back in its current form if it ended this poorly um you know despite being as good of a mobile game as it was like i said i was not a mobile game fan and then it turned into i enjoy the gameplay of the mobile game <laughs> more than the uh, standard game, at least while it was struggling, you know, so much last year. So, um, you know, now that I've rambled for like half an hour <laughs> about this, that's about all that I have to say. Um, I do want to thank all of the developers, the voice actors, the artists, the community, um, everyone who I know really put their heart and soul into this game, um, and the, the fans that are obviously heartbroken over it um and i i think that like i said i, I don't think there's necessarily a, a great happy ending on the horizon but i would say that you know you can always go sign the change.org position or petition which will do what change.org petitions do which is not change anything um but i'll probably link it in the in the comments below or whatever um I, I think the best thing anyone can do is give feedback on the game. Um, I don't know if mobile is currently asking for it, but I would say go ahead and just tweet, you know, EA um, or something like that if this is something that you're really passionate about and you really want to make a difference. Um, they also have uh, surveys more often on console and PC. So, you, pardon me, you could go on there if you're able and say, hey, I think this is really diluting the lore. That was something that I frequently did in Apex Mobile surveys was say, hey, like, gameplay is looking pretty great, but I really don't like what you're doing with the story. So I, I would say those are kind of your only options as far as that. Um, I may in the future look into kind of covering the 
you know, Rumbleverse versus Apex Mobile, you know, sunsetting situation um, in the future. I may also uh, cover a number of things that, that I've, I've got some ideas uh, for videos that were especially they're the kind of thing that I would probably normally write or pitch as a, a feature, but my arms are now so goofed up from carpal tunnel that it's just easier to talk. So uh, that's what I'm sticking with for the the moment um but i'll also have um links to some articles on apex mobile most of them will be written by me um but also hopefully next time i will have my nice little you know mic hooked up i don't have it hooked up today because i have to charge my computer like my mac so uh so yeah that's pretty much it uh i hope to uh add you know more videos to this channel pretty regularly and learn how to edit videos better and be a little bit less awkward uh but thanks for sticking with me if you've been here since the beginning where i did nothing but sing acapella terribly and very loudly um and if you're new here please consider you know subscribing uh like the video if you liked the video um and you know gently caress the bell icon if you want to hear from me the next time I have something to say. Um, I will probably do be doing a lot of Apex Legends content. Um, not necessarily all about gameplay, I'm very much into the lore, uh, but it's also not my only, you know, thing that I'm interested in. If you do want to see more videos of me singing at the top of my lungs, like maybe I'll make a separate channel for that or something. I don't know. But uh, just let me know what kind of stuff you would like to see uh, or any, you know, Apex related topics that you would like um, to see discussed. Uh, and yeah, that's about it. So I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye. Okay, one thing I also forgot to mention is I just wanted to give a quick shout out to my dear friend from high school, uh, stream professor. He is who uh, kind of was kind enough to set me up with some equipment to uh, get my YouTube channel running, like the this you know lovely microphone that I didn't have a chance to use today and some other stuff and he runs uh, a great channel that is perfect for people who are new to YouTube and maybe don't know uh, really how to get started or don't know what equipment to buy or, or what's worth it. Um, he's not one of those channels that's like, how to go viral, pay $50 for my course and I'll sell you some bull- he's, he's really uh, more about like the technical side of things, which was ultimately what had kind of stopped me in my, you know, journey from old-timey YouTube to kind of picking it back up in recent times is obviously you can't just, like, turn on a little digital camera and just go. Now, kind of a lot more is expected uh, quality-wise. Hopefully, I'll get better at it. But uh, definitely go visit his channel. This video obviously isn't sponsored. He didn't ask me to say anything. But uh, he is the reason that I am able to do this, so I just wanted to give him a quick shout out, and I will see you guys next time.